shackles. An iron ball hangs on a thread, exposed to the force of gravity and the attraction of three magnets. If this pendulum is brought to any starting position and then released, it will ultimately come to a stop over one of the magnets. But over which one? That depends solely on the starting position. Each magnet will attract any ball that is released in its immediate neighborhood, but each will also attract some balls whose starting position is farther away. The situation is complex and extremely difficult to grasp within the framework of the experiment. Here, computer simulation can be of help. We mark the ball's starting point with the color of the magnet over which it comes to rest. To obtain a systematic overview, we do this for a series of points scattered uniformly over the entire plane. The colored squares represent only their central points. It is possible to refine this structure by using a denser grid of sampling points. or an even denser grid. An even denser one still. The colors are stirred together into a highly complex structure. How should we understand this picture? In some areas, it is quite clear. All balls that are started within a blue area land over the blue magnet. From here, the ball lands on the red magnet. From here, starting from only a slightly different position, on the yellow one. And from a position in between, on the blue one. The magnets seem to compete for the balls down to the smallest detail. 
Any prognosis as to the behavior of the balls in this area is nearly hopeless. This is chaos, pure and unadulterated. All of the yellow colored dots taken together form the realm of the yellow magnet known as its basin of attraction, a formation displaying wildly interlacing fibers of arbitrarily small thickness. A ball started anywhere inside this area will end up at the yellow magnet. The longer the ball needs to come to rest, the darker the color of the respective sub-area. From here it happens very quickly, and then more and more slowly. The shape of the areas of attraction can change considerably if the experimental conditions are modified. For instance, the length of the thread or the strength of the magnetic or gravitational force, quantities which mathematicians call parameters. In this computer simulation, it is easy to reduce the gravitational force to that of the moon, causing the structures to gradually disentangle themselves. And to raise it back to that of Earth. In any case, we observe a peculiar phenomenon. Wherever any two colors meet, there seems to be a narrow strip of the third interposed between them. As far as we can verify, this property continues on down into the tiniest ramifications. Can we trust this perception? Can there really be such an infinitely frayed dividing line? <laughs>